Good afternoon. I hope everybody's having a great day. Making sure you drink your water. And. Staying out of trouble. I know summertime or semi-summertime causes people a little trouble. But. I want to make sure I have my disclaimer out there first for fair use. Um, tonight we're going to talk about Rachel Moran targeted in the daylight. This is a story that just broke. But I'm going to cover what nobody else is probably covering. Um, so everybody's got my disclaimer right there. That's good. And let's get started. So the 37-year-old mother of five died on a Maryland hiking trail over um, the weekend in August of 23. And she appeared to be beaten to death and left naked by her killer. Rachel Moran's lifeless body was discovered in a drainage in a tunnel on the scenic Ma Pa Heritage Trail in Bel Air, Maryland. That is a whole mouthful right there. And we're going to have to say it a lot. So after repeat, re being reported missing on that Saturday evening, um, local man Michael, let me get this, oh, okay, got his picture there. Local man uh, Michael Gabraziki had joined the search for the missing mom along with his stepdaughter, Cecilia. Now, and they were friends with Mar uh, Rachel. I'm just going to call her Rachel um, and leave it at that. And her friend, even. So when he claims he came across her remains on that Sunday in an interview, the Native American tracker said that the pair had decided to check two drainage tunnels on the trail in Hartford County after noticing disturbances on the ground close to the track where the fitness buff had taken a walk that night. Now, Cecilia was the first person to see the body, he claimed. So, she was hyperventilating really, really bad, and the police told her to sit down. Which, I mean, she's a kid, what are you going to tell her, right? So, when she sat down, she realized she was sitting in a big pool of blood. And I'm sure that just did not help at all with the situation. This is a young girl. Um, Rachel was laying on her back fully naked and she had brutal, brutal trauma. It looked like her head had been smashed with a rock. So there was a 15 to 20 foot blood trail. So it looked like she'd not only been beaten but that she had been dragged into that position. And it looked like the killer was trying to erase her identity because the right side of her face was all gone. Now, a separate source said that was close to the family that the young mother had suffered serious head trauma and the injuries were so horrific that they would not and would not be an open casket at her funeral. That's that's bad. And you know, this is just pictures of the trail. These are people going out to do the search party. Um, the locals that were seen participating in a community walk along the Ma Pa Trail 
amid the investigation. So people came together and started walking and looking for this mother, a mother of five. So the police had reached out to um, everybody at the time to obtain any footage from people who were on the trail over the weekend. Hartford, Hartford County Sheriff's Department wrote in a statement that detectives were asking people for their help. Kind of like people, you know, the Sheriff's Department came out and asked for help about Sebastian. And that's where we're going to go about that. This is not about Sebastian. This is about Rachel. So, if you were on the Mawpaw Trail on Saturday or near the trail, the trail heads and took photos or videos, they were asking, would you please share them with the investigators? There would be That would be something helpful. There could be something helpful in one of your photos that might bring us one more piece of the puzzle. Now, this has been proven to work reaching out to the public. Speaking of Gabby, Gabby Petito, um, the police reached out to all of the YouTubers, everyone in the park, and asked them to search their footage. And it just so happens that um, that footage was taken from YouTubers, and that is what led to finding Gabby Petito's body. Now, back to this. As of the morning that they received, from that morning, they received 90 tips from the concerned community members in reference to the murder of Rachel. And they thanked everybody for their support that they'd given. It was formally confirmed on that Monday that the body found was Rachel. Now, we're ta I'm taking this story back. I'm not just, you know, this is her and this is her new boyfriend in this picture, Richard Tobin, who took to social media to insist that he had nothing to do with her killing despite his criminal past. And I'm not going to cover his criminal past because it plays no part in any of this. Um, they had a very short meeting. Our relationship was just on the start. So I think that played a part more than his past was that they had been officially a couple four to five days. Not saying they hadn't been dating for a while. Maybe they had. That information was not disclosed. But Rachel and Richard, that's his name, Richard Tobin, started dating a few weeks ago. And then she was found murdered. So these are pictures of previously when they had gone hiking and walking the trails themselves. Local police declined to comment on how Rachel died or the type of injury she sustained at the time. Her family said she did not go willingly and that her death was not accidental. It comes after her new boyfriend took to social media on that Sunday to insist <laughs> that he had nothing to do with her killing despite his criminal past. Now, the pair had only made their relationship official on social media four days earlier. He said, I love Rachel, and I would never do anything to her. Let the family and I grieve. Yes, I have a past, but I also have 15 months clean and have changed as a person. Please.
the hunt for Rachel's killer in November. So the the information I just gave you stemmed from the beginning, which would have been, let me get, I said the date, but I'm going to repeat that. Me and my mouse have um, differences. Um, so I started the story out where it started out August of 23. It was 10 August 23. And now on your screen, uh, it doesn't look like a, a good picture, but that's okay. Because they put out anyone with information related to Rachel Moran murder case can contact the Hartford County Sheriff's Office at these numbers and the tip line. Now, the hunt for Rachel, Rachel's killer, had veered sharply from the Bel Air community where she was a slain mother of five, died to a neighborhood in Las Vegas. What? I mean, we just jumped, wow, yeah, we jumped far. The law firm assisting Moran's family and officials in tracking down her killer has changed its focus to the West Coast. We're going to Cali. Moran, 37, was reported missing in early August by her boyfriend, Richard Tobin, when she didn't return from her walk on the popular Bel Air Ma Pa Trail. I'm glad they, you know, broke that down better. DNA evidence from the from the crime scene matched DNA found at the scene of a March 2023 home invasion and sexual assault of a girl in Los Angeles. Had to get a drink there. The sheriff's office said on August 16th that doorbell camera video provided by the LAPD captured a brief clip of that man leaving the scene of the alleged home invasion and its an assault in California. And initially, the family was very hopeful. Um, unfortunately, the trail had gone a bit cold because they have not been able to put a name to that DNA or the video itself. So, the sheriff's office worked with the local Hispanic community to try and identify the suspected killer. The community was, you know, canvassed with people and they spread the word about Rachel's murder and the video update from the sheriff's office in both English and in Spanish subtitles. Now, this is this is interesting. I've never heard of this before. I've heard a lot of things, but I've, I've never heard of the Postal Service <laughs> helping with catching a killer. I'm just going to say it like that. So, the... Hold on. Let me make sure I get into this guy, right? Um, got so many people involved in this. Randolph Rice, managing partner of Rice, Mer Mutha, and Pasteris is the legal firm working in hand in hand with this. So Rice, Mutha, and Portia I'm just going to say Portia. How about that? But it's P-S-O-R-A-S. Portia. Okay. Had partnered with the United States Postal Service's targeted mailing program to dispute reward flyers that featured images of the suspected killer minutes after the assault in Los Angeles. The flyers are printed in Spanish on one side and English on the other side in order to reach everyone in the community with information about this suspect because they believe he is a Hispanic male in his early 20s 
standing at about five foot nine and weighing 160 pounds. Now, your guess is as good as mine is how they knew how much he weighed. But anyway, the flyers will will be hand delivered to more than 10,000 homes, reaching more than 58,000 residents in the neighborhood of California crime scene. Rice said the firm used satellite photos and the unique ridge line of homes in the video to pinpoint the exact address of the crime scene in Los Angeles. From that information, they were able to establish a perimeter in which to target the community most likely to know this man. Now, this is just very interesting. This whole United States Postal Service targeting mailing program. I mean, why are we not? I don't mean to bring Sebastian up again, but why are we not? How about any kid? Any kid missing right now that we don't know where they are? How come this system of the United States Postal Service targeted mailing program to distribute flyers is not being used? Or is this simply something that only happens in California? Because if so, um, well, that just seems, that, that doesn't make sense to me. It's the United States Postal Service. I mean, it's just one thing. It's not bound by one state or another. But there are so many kids missing. Kids. And this is a lady, a mother of five. But there are so many kids missing that this postal program could be used to further out the looking for the child. I mean, like I said, the flyers were hand-delivered to more than 10,000 homes, reaching more than 58,000 residents in the neighborhood. And they used satellite photos and unique rig lines. I mean, they knew where this guy was, and I'm sure, or they know who they're looking for. Okay, so they were doing a perimeter. And I understand that we don't really have anyone else. You know, we know this person did this. I understand that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the features of using this um, Postal Service targeting mail-out program could get a lot of things out in further places than people can hand out flyers. Anyway, the goal of the campaign for Rachel was to reach anyone who recognized the perpetrator and inform them that the same man murdered Marilyn mother Rachel. We firmly believe that there are people within this neighborhood who can lead law enforcement to the suspect and stop him from attacking again. See, they already know Rachel was not his first victim. That is how they got on to this, this man. That's why they're in California. And as a reward, $30,000 had been offered to anyone who could possibly, positively identify the killer and provide information leading to his capture and conviction. Rice said, we're confident that this individual is known in that community, and we hope that by publicizing his connection to, more, to Rachel's murder will trigger someone who knows him to do the right thing and call in a tip. We cannot rest until we identify Till we have identified the individual responsible for this senseless tragedy. The video doorbell image is one of the most significant leads, I think, that will let, you know, the individuals know in that Los Angeles community that they can use to identify the killer. So, ring cams are not just for 
playtime, and I've seen it come up in another case as well. That's not really popular, but Rachel's family deserves answers, and this is just one step in, in the efforts to deliver it. Um, we are confident that the flyer program in the right hands will provide information about the suspect that they will lead to his capture. Now, that's part of the problem. We don't really have a suspect in the cases we're talking about now, I guess is the way to put it. So, now this sketch went out on February 24th, 2024. And the sketches of a suspect and the new details in the Rachel Moran homicide that was shared with the sheriff's office. A sketch had been released of the suspect sought in the homicide case, <laughs> along with details that before that never before had been released. The new information includes what happened during the assault in Los Angeles that links this man to Rachel's death, where Rachel was killed along the Ma Pa Trail in Bel Air, and how long the suspect likely was in the Bel Air area before her death. Y'all need to go fix your popcorn and get back on here. We ain't even got the good stuff yet. the bathroom break for you. Okay, it's over. <laughs> so it's been more than six months at this point since the 37-year-old mother of five was found dead August 5th, 2023. Investigators believe the suspect was in the Bel Air area days before Rachel was killed. Her boyfriend, Richard Tobin, was reported reported her missing when she didn't return from her walk on the trail the night before. The Sheriff's Department previously said he believes, they believe that the man who took Rachel's life is a serial killer. Mm. According to investigators, the suspect is a Hispanic man in his early mid-twenties and estimated to be five foot nine and weighing around 160 pounds. Now, on Monday, the sheriff's office, the Hart Harford, it's not Hartford, it's H A R F O R D, Harford County Sheriff's Office shared a podcast. Shared in a podcast, but you know they do things different. In California, obviously, they're doing a podcast and stuff. That, that's new. I, I don't know what I think about that. But I'm sure they have a public relations in um, most police offices or sheriff's office that could do a podcast um, to better help in communicating with the public in what's going on in the case and what is what because that seems to be a big problem recently so anyway they shared it in a podcast that the investigation has led them to seven different states with 10 federal state and local agencies assisting thousands of bilingual flyers have been distributed in Maryland, California, where a DNA analysis of Rachel's crime scene matched. It matched DNA found at a home invasion and assault of a young girl in Los Angeles. Now, I'm just covering this so that we get to where we're going. Yeah, I could do the short version to it and say, hey, this time this girl, this is this, or whatever you've already seen. You know, there's plenty of people putting that out there, but I wanted to cover more of this than 
people should be more than a flyby at night or a, a Dorito commercial. When their life is lost, it's longer than a, a bag of chips, you know. Let's give a little, you know, dignity to the situation. Doorbell camera provided by the Los Angeles Police Department captured a brief clip of that man leaving the scene of the reported home invasion and assault in California. Investigators have conducted more than 100 interviews and followed up on a thousand tips. This is him. I mean, we're just going to stay on this picture for a little bit so y'all don't get too crazy. The Sheriff's Office also has created a special edition of its Into the Sheriff's Spotlight podcast. Wow. They really do things different in California. The podcast provides more details and updates on the case. In this podcast, Captain Andy Lane and Major Jack Simpson discuss Rachel's death, including... Here we go. The first statement and question we'll say it as a question answer how about that where was rachel attacked along the trail rachel the answer to that was rachel was attacked at a bend in the ma and pa trail then pulled into a drainage culvert located in a dense area north of the spot where the trail crosses under Route 24, or Route 24, however you say it where you are. In the summer, the culverts cannot be seen, the official said. The location of the attack was chosen because of the proximity of the culverts to the trail. The men also said during the podcast they believe Rachel could have been stalked. However, witnesses re reported seeing an individual standing in the wood line around the time of Rachel's attack. So the attack could have been a crime of opportunity. The next question was, what DNA was recovered in Los Angeles? And they responded with, DNA left at the crime scene in Los Angeles was found on a hat the suspect wore. When DNA from Rachel's crime scene was entered into a federal database that matched the DNA recovered from the LA crime scene, there you go. So this podcast is a really good thing I can see already. You know, they're they're posing questions to themselves, no one's calling in and asking these questions. They are literally doing what I'm doing. Saying a question and then answering that question. So one guy may be asking the question and the other guy may be answering it. So on to question three. What was the suspect? Why was the suspect in Maryland? Official answer was officials still do not know why the suspect was in maryland he could live in the area and travel to california during the march assault or lives in california and traveled to maryland at which time he attacked rachel in august officials say we really don't know where he was in between on to the fourth question. What happened in California and whose arm can be seen in the video? Now the answer to that was the men described the attack in California as a violent attack, a random attack. Multiple people in the home were injured. According to LA officials, the suspect entered the home and violently and physically attacked multiple people, including a child, 
who were hurt during that incident. This case shows how dangerous this individual is and how important it is to locate him for the public safety, of course. And the suspect assaulted two family members who couldn't defend themselves. A third family member was a minor who entered the room and surprised the suspect. The minor forced the suspect out of the home as the minor didn't understand why the suspect was attacking family members. As the suspect fled the home, realizing other family members were waking up, the minor slammed the door shut, locked it, and called the police. The officials explained. Now, that that minor, um, he was taught well on what to do. That was very brave of him. The next question was, is the suspect Hispanic? The answer was, DNA genetic material, along with other evidence, led police to determine the suspect is Hispanic. They said, during the podcast, we don't know if the suspect is in the country illegally. He could be in the U.S. illegally. Legally. Here, he, it's okay for him to be here. See, sometimes people say they can't understand me, so I tend to uh, enunciate things because of that reason. So the men said during the podcast, both angles were being investigated, legal and illegal. So let's go to our next question. One asks, why now do you have a sketch? Yeah, why now do you have a sketch? A sketch. Multiple victims was the answer of the California assault helped officials compose that sketch, along with witnesses of the possible suspect in Bel Air. We believe we have a sketch now that the closest rendition of what we have in this case. We do have witnesses in Hartford County, Rachel ran that trail daily, and a lot of people told us when they last saw Rachel, others saw the video, doorbell camera, and they believe they saw someone on the trail week, the trail weeks before her death that looked similar to the suspect. So this is not just a place she decided to go. I mean, she goes there so much, and probably at the same time that people know her. And so you have to assume, I guess, that the people walking there walk there at the same times as also. So, with that said, um, there were two sketches, one with showing the suspect wearing a hat and something he has worn in the past and others showing facial features of the suspect. Now, they believe he's going to do it again. Well, I, yeah, I, I wouldn't have doubted it either at this time. So, again, they stated out, if you have a tip, no matter what, no matter how big, no matter how small, contact us. And they put out their information, saying anyone who knows anything Nothing is too small, nothing is too big about Rachel's killing is asked to call the Hartford County Sheriff's Office. Now, a $35,000 reward for information leading to an arrest and conviction was was offered. And, you know, they made it where if people wanted to contribute to the reward, they could, you know, visit this law firm they gave the website and all that information so people could donate um, to the reward. They did not use a... Um, GoFundMe? They didn't use a GoFundMe. Not at all. 
So I'm not taking his picture down yet because he just needs to stay right there. Hmm. Okay, you made me do it. So as the officials continue to hunt for the suspect in Rachel's death, her family shared public images of the headstone that marks the mother of five's grave site. A sketch was released last month of the suspect sought in her homicide case, along with details never released before by the Harford County Sheriff's Office. Rachel was killed along the Mopal Trail in August of 2023. And I'm just going to keep reminding you of this because I don't want people to be listening to this and think this, oh, this happened just now. No, okay. We're getting to what happened today when it becomes appropriate. But just hang with me. And if you don't want to hang with me, that's your choice. But this is how I do a case. Full, factual as I can. Um, the family chose to record the unveiling of the headstone to ensure... Rachel's memory continued. They chose to record the unveiling of the headstone to share this significant moment with those who could not be present and to ensure that the memory of Rachel lives on. They hope that everyone visiting the site will find solace and the sense of connection to Rachel's vibrant spirit. The Hartford County Sheriff Jeffrey Gaylor, he said he believes the man who took Rachel's life is a serial killer. And he keeps saying this. According to the investigators, again, he, they, they're they going to keep putting this out at this time. I mean, the amount of postal stuff that went out that they said were flyers is unbelievable. But they see, still keep bringing up Hispanic men, early mid-20s, 5, 960 pounds. And they shared the podcast in a podcast that the investigation had led them to seven states. That's a... Uh, hmm. So, I want a better picture of her up than that. I'll put this picture up. So, with no, no, now this right here, we're in April of 2024. That's where we need to be right there. Eight months after Rachel's body was found. So with no arrest made, her family had issued a new plea for help in finding the killer. The law firm hired by Rachel's family, that's Rice, Luther, Horace, law firm, hired by Rachel's family, had released a 30-second commercial featuring Patty Morin, Rachel's mother. The commercial that will, 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 I'm sorry, the commercial aired in Southern California was both a tribute to Rachel and a plea for justice from her loved ones. In the video, Patty Morin talked about her daughter and how she was targeted in broad daylight leaving her children to mourn her death. If he is willing to kill a perfect stranger, he is willing to kill anybody.
her mother said in the video. She was the mother to five children. She was a sister. Somebody just grabbed her and took her. And if you know who this person is, turn him in. The commercial can be seen on YouTube and probably will launch to other social platforms in the Bel Air, Los Angeles, and bordering towns in the U.S. Mexico border. They're like, this guy could be anywhere at this point, even though they've had that massive perimeter target. Now, we know the sketch was released in February, February, and along with details never released before. The man took her life as a serial killer, and they keep saying that. Uh, I know it sounds repetitive, but how many things do we hear repetitive over something else, and nobody takes it seriously? Along with the 20 pounds, 5 foot, 960 pounds. And then they, again, shared with all the places that you have gone to. They've led them to seven different states. Ten federal, state, and local agencies assisting them. Thousands of bilingual flyers. They distributed in Maryland and California where a DNA analysis of Rachel's crime scene matched DNA found at a home invasion and an assault of a young girl in Los Angeles. Man. Neighborhood, about a half a mile. Well, I'm standing uh, in a neighborhood about a half a mile uh, due east of where Rachel was uh, brutally attacked and murdered. Uh, I'm in this neighborhood because due to the proximity of the attack and the fact that I now know that the suspect likely traveled in an easterly direction uh, after he killed Rachel, this is the prime search area that I'm targeting to try to find clues uh, to the suspect's identity. Um, I've been walking around these homes, handing out flyers, um, talking uh, to the community, have received some tips from the community that are relayed to the sheriff's department, um, and just taking notes about what I see. Uh, I do feel like answers can be found in this community. Um, so for the next few weeks, I'm just gonna keep walking the streets and keep working it. Lord. Hold on one second. I got my little fingers messed up on pictures, so I'm just going to put her up there. Sometimes I get messed up with, you know, here and there and where I'm going. But it's okay. You know why? Because we're just here to learn. Again, now that was Mac McConan, and he was the father of Rachel's 18 year old daughter, Faye. Told Patch, the Harford County Sheriff's Office still has three detectives dedicated to the case. No arrest had been made yet in the brutal slaying of Rachel. They still have quite a lot of information to sort through and leads to follow. They and I have com complete faith in their work and believe they will identify and apprehend this suspect. In the meantime, McMahon continues to comb the neighborhood adjacent to the Maha Ma Paw Trail, 
near where Rachel's body was found August 23rd. I mean, August of 23. He teamed up with former FBI profiler Tim Papa to create two videos that Faye and her father hope will spark a recollection or generate a new clue that will help investigators. Maha also is handing out flyers in an effort to drum up clues. He said, I've received several tips that I've relayed to the sheriff's office, taking notes about what I see. I feel like answers can be found in this community. So for the next weeks, I'm going to just keep walking the streets and keep working it. And I think some people in current cases could really take that advice versus bait baseless uh, drama that they're creating that is produ producing zero results if that makes sense so I mean a whole lot of fighting a whole lot of he said she said it's not finding um, children and it's not doing anything in a positive way to find and again you know someone probably said but this ain't a kid you're talking about it doesn't matter it's these kind of things, whether it be an adult or especially a child, these are the things that need to be done. If you gotta walk it yourself, then walk it. Because that's what he did. He said, I walked the area of the woods the suspect was lurking in to attack Rachel. I discussed how the suspect was wearing boots, jeans, and a hoodie and moved in the easterly direction around the attack. That's why I'm canvassing the neighborhood between William Street, Baltimore Pike, and Route 24. A killer will typically have an anchor point within half a mile of an attack location. So since he moved in that direction, I believe he was staying in one of the homes. So, who? Mm. Mm -mm -mm. He says, I'm never going to understand his mind. I don't want to understand his mind. But I can just see things the way he was seeing them. If, if I could. If I can just see things the way he was seeing them. I'm hoping I'll get some insight. Mc, McMahon said on the earlier that he'd been try he these trails I've been following, I feel like he was likely walking on these earlier the day he killed Rachel. And when he was in the planning phase, he knew the tunnel location and had been lurking in the woods watching women run by. He said I pointed out a footbridge with a railing that's 60 seconds away from the location of Rachel's brutal attack. A dirt path nearby that runs parallel to the Mopaw Trail's main route gives an open view of runners and trail users. Plus it leads Back up. Don't worry about him. That's my little guard dog right there. <laughs> That's a big kiss. Um, the trail's main route gives an open view of runners and trail users. Plus, it leads back to the hill to an adjacent neighborhood that McMahon has been targeting. But unfortunately, on May 5th, shortly after 7 o'clock, the suspect was in the woods wearing work boots, jeans, hoodies, and sunglasses and saw Rachel and decided he had an opportunity. There was no one else on the trail, so he attacked Rachel and quickly brought her back up the trail to the tunnel and killed her. 
he would have had privacy in this area with all the vegetation. In one of the videos, he points out to where the suspect likely killed Rachel, identified where the suspect probably was hiding and showed the path he took to escape. He said there's a place he was calling home. There's a place he was calling home in that neighborhood. And he really believed that. And he continues to search. But he wasn't giving up. And he wasn't even with her anymore. I hope some people take that and put it in their pocket. He wasn't with her anymore. She was with someone else, but he still is out looking for her killer. So here we are. Well, I'm looking for a pretty boy's picture. There he is. There he is. Right there. This was today, June 15th of 24, around 1.13 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. A man from El Salvador has been charged with murder in connection with the death of Rachel Morin, a mother of five whose body was found along the Bel Air Trail last summer. Victor Martinez Hernandez, 23, was arrested in Tulsa, Oklahoma on Friday night and booked into the jail Saturday morning. Harford County Sheriff Jeffrey Gayler, Gayler said at a press conference Saturday the suspect was charged with first-degree murder and first-degree R. No, I didn't stop speaking. I just didn't say the word. And I apologize for some of the last names of these people, which is the most odd spelling names I've ever seen. But anyway, so the again, the suspect was charged with first-degree murder and first-degree R. Her body was found naked and violated, violently assaulted in a drainage ditch near the Ma Paw Trail in Bel Air last August. After her boyfriend, Richard Tobin, reported her missing when she didn't return from her walk on the trail the night before. I'm just going to say his name is Gaylor, but it's G-A-H-L-E-R. So I'm going to say Gaylor said Martinez Hernandez was hanging out at a storefront in Tulsa when officers charged him with trespassing and he was identified during the processing as the suspect wanted in Maryland for Rachel's death. And to date, there was nothing to indicate anyone else was involved in her death. Gaylor said Saturday, Investigators believe Martinez Hernandez spent some time in the Bel Air area and may have seen Rachel on her regular walks on the trail. Investigators from Hartford County said that they are en route to Tulsa where the extradition process has begun to return Martinez Hernandez to Maryland to stand trial, the sheriff said extradition can take up to 30 to 60 days. Gaylor said 
I want him to die in Maryland prison system. Remind me of Grady, um, whatever his name is in Florida. That sheriff down there, he don't play. So he said, yeah, I want him to die in the Maryland prison system. Rachel's mother, Patricia, spoke at the news conference to thank the local, state, and federal law enforcement agencies for their hard work. She also thanked the news media for keeping the story alive, which generated tips from for investigators. And at one point, when things seemed really bleak and hopeless, the lead detective said to me, patience will win in the end. And that's what what they've been doing. They've been working really hard. And that goes to show you, just because you don't see something don't mean it ain't happening. Matt McCon Mac Mohan, that's what I'm gonna call him, M C Capital M little C <coughs> Capital M A H O N, the father of Rachel oldest daughter, Faye, told the Baltimore Banner the family received a call at 1.18 a.m. Saturday that a suspect has been arrested in Rachel's death. The sheriff's office believe and the, believes the suspect was in Bel Air for work last summer. I'm feeling relief and gratitude, he said. Gratitude to the HCSO for not giving up on Rachel. A few weeks after the California attack, police announced that DNA evidence pulled from the Rachel crime scene matched DNA found at the scene of a March 23 home invasion and sexual assault of a girl. The suspect attacked was the suspect was described as a Latino man between 20 and 30 who was five foot nine and 160 pounds? Boy, they got that right on point, didn't they? Mm. The, the Hartford County Sheriff's Office said last year. Investigation has led them to seven different states, ten federal, and we've heard this ten with ten federal, state, and local agencies assisting and thousands upon thousands of bilingual flyers distributed in Maryland, California through the United States Postal Service program. I really, really am going to be checking that out because I've never heard of that before until this case. And I wonder what the ramifications are for the U.S. Postal Service um, doing the flyers along with the mail. Personally, I think that is a great idea. Randolph Rice, managing partner of Rice Murtha Por Porus Law Firm, originally hired by some of Rachel's family members, told Patch that the law firm is unaware of any other cases that have been linked to the suspect suspect's DNA other than the assault case in Los Angeles door doorbell camera video provided by LAPD. Captured with a brief, I not do mean a brief, clip of that man leaving the scene of the reported home invasion. I mean, this is brief. This is what they were going with. This right here to, it's to my right that I'm looking at my computer. Um, I have no idea how they could identify him at all with this picture. But they did. Thank God for DNA.
So during an emotionally tra uh, charged news conference Saturday afternoon, the public learned more about the man who was arrested Friday night in Oklahoma and charged in the rape and death of Bel Air mom, Rachel Morin. Morin, 37, excuse me. Sorry, I had to cough. Morin, 37, whose body was found along the Ma Paw Trail in 23, was a mother of five. She frequently jogged the trail near where she was found, raped, and beaten to death. The suspect in her death, identified by police as Victor Antonio Martinez Hernandez, 23, of El Salvador, has been charged with first-degree R and first-degree murder in Rachel's death. He also has been linked to a home invasion and sexual assault in Southern California. At one point, when things seemed really bleak and hopeless, the leading detective told Rachel's mom, patience will win in the end. And that's what they've been doing, diligently working through all the leads. And I believe that is what's happening today with other cases. On what would have been Rachel's 38th birthday, May 20th, and what Gaylor called poetic justice, Rachel's own divine intervention, investigators uncovered a lead that led to the suspect's arrest. Rachel's murder is no longer murderer is no longer a free man. Hopefully he will have the opportunity hopefully he will never have the opportunity to walk free again. The lead we received related to DNA evidence that allowed investigators to put a name to the image of that suspect in the video from Los Angeles attack was released after Rachel's death. We knew what he looked like, but we didn't know who he was. With that new DNA evidence, we then knew who he was, but not where he was. During the past two weeks, investigators tracked the suspect from Prince George County, Maryland, to Oklahoma where late Friday night he was arrested for trespassing at a business in Tulsa. So who is Victor Ontario Martinez Hernandez? He's a citizen of El Salvador who illegally illegally entered the United States in February 23. Gaylor said an immigration and customs enforcement detainer had been filed on the suspect because he's in the country illegally. He worked odd jobs and didn't have and did not have did not live an expensive lifestyle. It's a free country, so once you're here, you move from one uh, jurisdiction to the next. He went from El Salvador to the U.S., to Los Angeles, to Harper County, then Prince George's County, then Virginia, then Oklahoma. We weren't, we aren't sure where he, where else he's been. And we certainly know he has connections in D.C. and Prince George. So we believe he has ties to known gangs and that that's how he lived his life. So, again, you know, reporters asked, so why did he flee El Salvador? Gaylor said officials have learned that Rachel apparently wasn't the suspect's first victim. It's my understanding that the suspect, this monster, 
fled to the United States after committing the brutal murder of a young woman in El Salvador one month prior in July 23. Gaylor said he also attacked the nine-year-old girl and her mother in Los Angeles in March of 23. This is the second time in two years that an innocent Harford County woman has lost her life to a criminal who's in the country illegally. The second woman to be killed by an illegal alien. Both suspects in both cases were from El Salvador with ties to criminal gangs. Victor Martinez Hernandez didn't come here to make a better life for himself, but to escape the crime he cl- he did in El Salvador. That's the last place he wants to go. Our deals are better here than they are in El Salvador, and he's going to spend, God willing, the rest of his life behind bars. Gaylor said, we fear all the time that we're going to stumble across some crime through DNA or other science that he's committed. I never want him to leave Maryland again. I want to make sure he never sees the light of day, Gaylor said. So the question was asked, how did officials identify him? I'm sorry. And thanks to what's called investigative genetic genealogy, officials used crime scene DNA to trace that DNA to potential family members of the suspect since there wasn't any hints in the federal CODIS database linking the crime directly to the suspect. In fact, FBI agents traveled to El Salvador in their hunt for Rachel's killer. Let me get it. They never gave up and followed every piece of information. Special agent in charge of the FBI's Baltimore field office. Invested genetic genealogy has gotten a lot of attention lately from the gold from the Golden State Killer and other investigators on the cold case side. Although we prior prioritize current cases, it's a game changing investigative tool that we use when we are when there are no other leads. I hope that they're using that more. I don't even know. I'm just going to be honest. I don't know if this is specifically something that happens in California and the way that they operate. And my little dude is just, he is just dying to be on here. I mean, he never parks. But anyway, you know, he's a cute guy. But back to my my statement i i don't i haven't heard these things being used on the current cases that many of us are searching i haven't heard the postal mail thing done before about the postal workers giving out flyers with the mail that is genius and i want to know why it's not being done on other cases. So they applied investigative genealogy in the link, like I said, to his family members. And unfortunately, on the victim side, they can build their cases out when we can't identify a victim through any other means. And we've seen 130 cases since 2018 that have successfully used this tool. There you go. 120, 130 cases since 2018 have been solved using investigative genetic genealogy. So 
So another question was, will the suspect be prosecuted in Hartford County? Allison Healy, state's attorney for Hartford County, spoke at the news conference and said she will be prosecuting the case. And she said, while the defendant is innocent until proven guilty, standard sentence, that is, must be said, Harford County can rest assured that justice will be served for Rachel Martin and her family. I have already coordinate, coordinated the extradition of the defendant to Harford County, and once he is here, prosecution will commence. She sounded really strong saying that, so I don't doubt her. So they asked the question, did he work alone in Rachel's death? Gaylor said there's no reason to believe that the suspect had help in Rachel's death. He said the suspect is believed to have spent time in Bel Air and observed her daily routine, including when she went jogging alone on the trail. Gaylor said that's one thing we caution people about, particularly women, is done is don't develop a routine where it's predicted where you will be. That is so true. And I say to women out there, always have a, a buddy, a partner, a friend. Travel in packs. Little girls, don't go off on your own. I know you think you're grown. But mm, this is not the time anymore in this day to be doing that. Stay in packs. If he, the suspect, decides to talk in the days ahead, we will learn more. And as we investigate, and we have investigators in Tulsa right now following up on many things as the investigation continues. You can see his captured picture. Let me see. Did I put it in? I didn't put it in here either because, you know. I should put that in there. Because this is my favorite part. See, don't let looks fool you. Don't let looks fool you at all. That is a, a very deadly person. But I love the... But you can't really see it. It cut it off. It says, captured. And this is the many faces of evil. Wow. So I hope we learned a lot tonight. And I was going to play the press conference. I was going to play the press conference, but I'm not going to because I read most of the questions and answered what they said. So with that said, please, please before you leave put your seats up put your popcorn empty cases in the trash don't leave litter around i hope i didn't keep you from supper it's only 5 30 here in the central area i thank you for coming i thank you for your time i thank you for your patience and i only ask that you please like, comment, share this video, and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Thank you, and have a great night.